uh, welcome back. As we come to the close of this year, of course, many parents are a worried lot. Why? Their children are coming back home for the holiday, and uh, this means budgets will have to be adjusted to meet new and sometimes unrealistic demands. Now, to make matters worse, the unions known to represent teachers seem not to see eye to eye on a couple of matters, from their days of calling for strikes to now the marking of national examinations, which is scheduled to start at the end of the month. What is the future of the education sector? Will the two unions, Nat and Coupet, ever walk together for a long period of time without battling it out amongst themselves? Well, today we want to find out. We are honored indeed this morning to have the Nat chairman, Wilson Sosion, close to me. Welcome to Thank the you. Power Breakfast Show. And then, of course, uh, Cooper Chairman Omboko Milemba. Welcome to the Power Breakfast Show. Perhaps let's, let's begin with this particular fact here. For a very long time, we've, of course, had discussions revolving the teacher strike, and it was purely a battle. Do you ever agree on certain things? Perhaps we could start from there, from your part. Yeah, chairman. of course, fundamentally, uh, as trade unions, we exist to represent the basic interests, the interests of teachers and the wider interest and progress of education sector on behalf of teachers. Uh, for us as NAT, we have represented the true interest of teachers and uh, we don't have any trouble with our brothers. Uh, we've encouraged them to work along with us mm -hmm. and if need be, uh, join us so that we All can right. speak from a strong central voice since the government is one, the employer is one, but very often they have a tendency of doing things differently. Uh, and uh, sometimes we tend to think that it's top heavy uh, programming on their part. That has been our trouble. Otherwise, uh, teachers' issues are one and the same. Mm. Uh, yeah. We have got 278,000 teachers, and uh, if they speak differently, they will be speaking their issues. Mm. But speaking through one central voice mm. is critical. A strong central voice makes it very easy. And uh, we can push this government with a lot of ease and success. All right, Milemba, uh, well, so Sion says brotherly, you know, sort of creating a situation that it's really a brotherly relationship. Is that so? Uh, really, it's a, it, it is a brotherly and should be a brother relations. But... Um, we really, as Coupet, have a cluster of teachers who are in the post-primary sector. And the post-primary sector has unique problems and challenges. In fact, we're coming up with courtesy of need to represent those very unique challenges of the post-primary school sector. So when why, why are they unique? So they are unique because they don't, uh, uh, the systems are different. For instance, when we talk of boards of management, they deal with teachers within the post-primary, and they even discipline them. But in the primary sector, just one example, the discipline is done through the DO. So those are unique issues and challenges. So when we even talk slightly different, it's because we also have different challenges which need very different approach. Look at, for instance, formally, before even the coming up of unions like Kuwaso, it looked like teachers could just talk with one voice and one voice. But Wasu equally in the university has very different challenges. Post-primary very different challenges. Primary very different challenges. And some of them do resemble, and that's why when we talk about employment of teachers, we are together. But when it comes to challenges that just affect our area, then we have to voice them out separately. But how we should in the future, we shall strengthen these unions so that Kupet is strong, Kenyut is strong, Wasu is strong, and in the future, like I told teachers in Bomet, we should see a press conference of Kupet, mm. Nat, ah. and Wasu. Oh. But I think that's about to come. Mm. We are just going through the last stage of that. All right. Yeah. Of, co of course, the latest issue right now is the fact that um, you maintain the stand that if the government does not raise the allowances of teachers by 300%, they should boycott the marking of exams. Why is that so? Uh, it is it's so because one, me myself, I've been an examiner. And when we talk about examining, we have two exams. We have KCP. KCP is marked very separately and differently from KCSE. 
KCP is marked for three days, and they only concentrate on maybe the composition and the few writings. But majority of the exams we call KCP is marked using computers over here. But KCSE is a, a manual exercise. You read the history and government paper, which I marked for about uh, 10 years, and you have to finish the script and actually award that student the mark he deserves. Now, the Kenya National Examination Council has been underpaying our examiners. But first I begin with even invigilators. The invigilators are underpaid. They are not given that money on time. And they are not even given out of pocket or per diem. So when an, in, an invigilator goes to school and a supervisor, he doesn't have money. He depends on the school for even lunch, tea. So he becomes a slave of that particular school. What we are telling the council is how I wish you would pay these people even per day the way the government pays individuals sends out to have an out of pocket so that they are independent from the beginning. You know, financial independence is also very important in how the integrity of exams will be. Then we have the center organizers who are our principals. They are given tasks by the council, but they are paid zero, nothing. Now, also, those supervisors and, and vigilators will have to wait for a year. Like now, they supervised uh, this month. They'll be paid next year in August or in July. Why should that happen? Let me come to the examiners, which is the core business. I've already talked about how unique the marking of KCS is. They go to the centers. This is a teacher, job group N of P. At the center, he's made now to, to be turned into a student. He sleeps on the student's bed, student's mattress, student's bed sheet. We are telling the council, can to improve the conditions of these markers to that level of government officers. But what are they paid? They are paid between 40 shillings to 50 shillings per script. We are telling the council, honestly, in this day and time, increase this by 300%. That will go to about 130 and 150 shillings per script. Now, they are also given something called out of, out of pocket. The council for a long time has been paying the teachers 50 shillings per day as out of pocket. Muteki. Which officer who went to the university as a master's comes to work and you pay him a 50 shillings? They now increase it to 100, which is still very low. We want it increased to 1,000 per day. And then, we are telling them, apart from uh, of, of, apart from the out of pocket there is some money called coordination fee it has been left at 500 shillings we want it also increased by 300% those are, are the issues we are raising before we have seen teachers boycott marking separately in different centers this time because they are unionized by ourselves as coupet and this is the real team that marks exams for one month we are telling the council please increase this amount or we are going to boycott the market. Right. Where do you expect the money come from? Good. Where does the money from for the council because come that's from? That's a lot of money. Two sources. One, the students themselves do pay registration fee. Which means you Last want, year, you want, you want registration relax, fees relax, increased. Relax. Last year they increased the, re, re, the, the registration fees from 400 for primary to a higher figure. Secondary was also increased. But they did not remember that even the workers who work for them also need that increment because they must have increased that fee because the conditions of operating, living, must have gone up. The second source of money for the council is the government. And that is why we are talking. Is the exchequer. The council needs to do during the time of budgetary allocation to pr present a good budget that would include very good welfare for the teachers of this country, which they have failed to do. And I must add by saying, on Thursday, I met the Kenya National Examination Council at Continental House in the Committee of Education, Parliamentary uh, Education Committee. And we grilled them for two hours. And I was assuring you, even the members of that committee were perturbed with the way the council is operating. I'm not interested in the secrecy of the council, but I'm only interested in the financial management and the remuneration to our teachers. Right but in out. terms of secrets of exams, let them keep the secrets. Perhaps let's take, uh, get the side of Wilson Saucion. You wrote an article saying, Coupet's plan to disrupt exam marking are myopic 
and an abuse of the teaching profession. Yeah, indeed. Uh, <coughs> the Kenya National Examination Council is a body that is constituted by law independently to administer exams. And its operation were upgraded in the 1980, and you are aware there is a new act for the Kenya National Examinations Council. I said our brothers are raising issues too late in the day. Mm. They were, they have At been the sleeping. end of the exam, they have been sleeping mm. that's over what, the that's year. That's what you because say. Mm. Uh, for us as NAT, we believe examination process is a serious matter. It's about lives of 400,000 KCB, KCSE candidates and 800,000 uh, KCP candidates who have been going through schooling, <coughs> parents are organizing, and we would like to see a situation where KCP results are, received, are, are released promptly and on time. The KCSC results should also be released promptly and on time. And nothing whatsoever should jeopardize the process of examination. So the element of timing is key. The matters that our brothers are raising at this hour too late in the day basically to remain relevant and to look like they are doing something and convince teachers that they are fighting for them should have been done far much earlier. But it, it and uh, are they making a point? That those increases, they are acceptable. Mm. Yeah, of course they did and we have addressed it. <laughs> and we have addressed it. <laughs> Mutege, let me tell you, uh, for us as not, we believe in engaging NEC by June of each year. And uh, I can assure you that we had a meeting with NEC in April, in May, number one, to look at the taxation which was imposed on the payments to examiners, invigilators, supervisors, and all contracted professionals yeah. by NEC. Uh, and taxation here means every examiner is going to lose a third of all the payments. Payment per script, which has talked about, 45 shillings per KCSC uh, markers, then it means it would have reduced to 30 shillings. There was a general outcry by examiners, and we picked it instantly in January. And, uh, and uh, we, we felt that was a very weighty matter. And we asked for a meeting with NEC, and we addressed all these all this issues so affecting so examiners. Are you Number one. Are you comfortable with the, the figures? The figures are getting we, now. We, we may not be comfortable, but we are satisfied that NEC has addressed most of the issues being raised at the moment. Number one. Uh, we NEC committed itself to consult Kenya Revenue Authority so that the tax waiver can be uh, extended to the teachers. That's number one. Number two, we agreed that the rates should be revised upwards. And no. Macu, the source of revenue to NEC, and this is where we need to consult with our brothers, so that it's about financing. The revenue is raised from the learners. The fee, examination fee of class 8 and form 4, which really is not much. It can't allow NEC to carry out the entire exercise. And probably in the spirit of the new constitution, section 53, uh, the Bill of Rights, where education should be free and is a basic right, examination should be financed by the state. That is a lasting solution. Once that is done, then payments and all other matters will be a thing of the past. So. We, we, we agreed with NEC that they should raise the rates for contracted professionals, all through from supervisors and vigilators to the markers to the coordinators. And they you committed agree? us, you yes. agreed, but the examination of marking is coming I'm, next I'm, month. I'm, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to the outcome, okay. Okay. Mutege, okay. Because I should tell you the outcome, the feedback. Yeah. Yes. This has been continuous engagement with NEC, and which we must do. And by the way, NEC is not an employer. It's, it's a body that can do things without consulting anyone. But we have engaged NEC. Number three, you remember NEC had also come up with a policy of ensuring that Form 3 candidates are registered at the beginning of the year and Standard 7 candidates are registered at the beginning of the year. And uh, that was a big concern to the majority of the parents, to the learners and to the teachers. And uh, we agreed that should be done at the tail end of the classes in November for Form 3s and in November for, uh, for, for Standard 7. And, and I think this should be appreciated. As a union, we have engaged, and uh, we have been engaging continuously. And as we are seated here right now, and this information 
should go to the examiners, it should go to the markers that the Kenya Revenue Authority has accepted to waive taxes for payments not exceeding 133,000. All the payments. So therefore, that means uh, all the contracted professionals, the examiners, the markers, the supervisors, the invigilators will receive their full pay, almost tax free, because we don't have markers who earn payments beyond 133. And as, as we are seated here, we've talked with most of them, they're happy and they will report to the marking centers because the tax waiver has been implemented. Number two, NEC has accepted to revise the rates upwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rates will be declared to the examiners at the marking centers across the board, uh, including even the supervisors and invigilators. Mm -hmm. By the way, the rules of the exam council and it is have the right to execute that, is that payments for contracted professionals are done once the results are released. So mm. the supervisors and invigilators who, 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 <coughs> who are supervising KCP correct? and KCSC mm. can only be paid once examination processes have been, have been done. Those are the rules. Have we must that. accept the manner in which the exam council is conducting business. And as a union, we see mm. no reason after sitting with the neck and negotiating about waiver of taxation, which has been done, uh, raising of uh, marking rates per script, even if it is by a shilling, but it has a been shilling. raised, then mm. we look at it as a bold attempt by the Kenya National Examination Council. And this is not the end. We are continuing to engage. We have raised the issue of, uh, of the principals of schools and head teachers who supervise exams. But in the meantime, because of limited resources, NEC may not be able to do that. But in the process of time, that should be done. All these things can be sorted out over time. But our brothers have been sleeping. They've never had a meeting with NEC. They've never even written to ask for a meeting with NEC. And when you raise issues, when examiners, contracted professionals, have confirmed through uh, the ICT systems to the exam council that they are proceeding to mark. It is wrong. We don't exist just to call strikes over okay, arbitrarily okay. over everything.